What's up everybody? Welcome to my review of the first Omen. We have two religious horror films in theaters right now competing back to back. Are they similar? Are they different? Which one is better? So the first Omen is a prequel to the original Omen. It takes place in Rome in 1971 and is directed by Arkasha Stevenson. I've never seen anything he's done. Some people have probably seen a uh, brand new cherry flavor. He directed an episode of that. But I've never seen anything he's ever done, but he's definitely one that I'm going to be looking out for. So starting things off with the positives about the first Omen. When I watched the first Omen in theaters, it made me think to myself, okay, I'm not crazy. Films can still be good again. I haven't lost the ability to enjoy films. They just haven't been like this. It made me actually think, oh, good filmmaking exists still. The first Omen is incredibly well directed. It's well structured with suspense sequences from the very first opening scene. It is very clear that you are in the hands of a director that knows exactly what he's doing and he's going to take his time and just let the story unfold right away. There's no crazy flashy opening. It's like it slowly brings you in and when you think you know what's going to happen, it finds a way to do that thing in just a little bit of a different way and slower. It just it just takes its time really, really just savors the moment and it just lets you know exactly what kind of film you're going to be in for. And I can see how some people may not like that. They may think it's a little slow, but it just oozes control and like it feels like the director knows exactly what he's doing. And it just sets you up for that, that feeling of you can sit back and relax. You're in good hands. This is going to be a movie that's going to just take you on a journey and you don't have to worry. You're going to enjoy it. Carry on with that concept of uh, amazing directing. This movie is really well shot. It looks like it's in the 70s, but it does that like old school 70s look in a good way. Not like, you know, Saw X where they just kind of like bumped up the saturation and looked like they threw like a pro mist filter or whatever on it and like bloomed the highlights and made it look like old. They made this, they didn't just slap some cheap film grain on it. They actually made it look, whether it's through set design or and props, uh, costumes or, or just the actual film. I don't know what this was shot on. It doesn't look like it was shot on film, but I could be wrong, but it does look good. It looks de-aged just the proper amount. And it doesn't look like it's supposed to be trying to look all old and like they got like this cheap like grain or like bad lighting and stuff. It looks 70s in just the perfect right like combination of modern style and 70s filmmaking. But also 70s is not just a look. It's a filmmaking style. And you've got zooms in here and these like shots from up above that are shooting through things that feel very 70s. These like panning shots and these like different styles of, of shooting that feel very reminiscent of older directors that really, really like took their time. And you've got like people walking on the sidewalk from high shots, very exorcist style, uh, very incredibly well done. It feels again, very 70s, but in the best way. You've also got an amazing performance in here from Nell Tiger Free. She absolutely kills in this film and her performance is so layered and so uh, complex <laughs> throughout that it, it just works so well because where you, uh, you can't help but compare this film to Immaculate because they have so many of the same beats and they're done so differently. There are very similar character similarities in this to the Immaculate, but Nell Tiger Free's character really makes sense how she's coming in and she's a nun or she's going to be a nun and she has these uh, fears of how the church and how the people are treating this child that she's um, that she's trying to care for. And so it really like works. You see this compassion inside of her and she gets angry and she's trying to work care for this child. It's, she's not just like, you know, this nun that's going on this ride that's just like, OK, I'm just a nun and there's creepy stuff in the nurse, which <laughs> creepy stuff in the church which is this the most generic way to do this and exactly how I felt Immaculate did. You've got this very, very complex, multi-layered layered character who shows these, these uh, you know, morality, this morality caring for these girl, this girl who can, she can relate to because she was a troubled youth at the same time. And you've got this relationship building. You've also got 
her trying to be like a fixture in the church and make a difference and make relationships with these people. And when something is asked of her in the film, you know, she acts like she probably should. She's like, hey, no, you're crazy. I'm not going to do that. It's very justified. And then later when you get this like big reveal for the character and she's just unraveling, she, she just, it does it so perfectly. There's a moment in the film towards the end that is very mirrored close to this, this film, the scene that's in Immaculate. And she just absolutely nails it. It's this one oneer that's just uh, holding on her. And she's just staring at the camera and something is happening. And I'm not going to say what yet. But she kills it. it. It's super effective. So much more effective than Immaculate. And so I just can't say enough good things about her, her performance in this film. You've also got fantastic and fleshed out side characters in this. Some of the other nuns. The priest again. So when you find out what's going on in the film, it's so much it's easier to like hop on board and understand what's going on. Because you have characters who you can understand the motivation behind. Whether it's good or bad or like logically makes 100% sense or, or not, you're able to follow along because you've developed these characters, you have, they have a relationship with your main character, and things are actually fleshed out a little bit. Let's talk about the scares real quick in the first Omen. This is so much more suspenseful and intense than most of the horror films that have come out recently. It's not like crazy in your face over the top it's very slow very subtle the scares are very very intentional just like deliberately long paced and drawn out and super suspenseful there's one moment in here when she's in the room and she's staring in the shadows and there's this um coat that is there and it's just perfectly framed right behind her shoulder so you just like can't help but see that it looks like something and it's just absolutely phenomenal because it's like nothing's even happening yet and that's that's building tension and it's just like you're staring at it and then it just like cuts away and it cuts back and it's just slowly slowly starting to like bring you into her mind and what she's seeing at the moment before you finally get this little little bit of a jump scare which again is like a really well done jump scare where yeah it's a little bit but it's not like bah and the music doesn't drain away it just builds to this inevitable climax and that's how you do a really good jump scare super effective doesn't drain the tension from the scene makes sense with what is going on with the character at the moment there's not a ton of scares in this film as i've said like jump scares or anything that's over the top you're not going to be like jumping out of your seat but again as i've mentioned it's very slow and methodical, intentionally building uh, suspense, building atmosphere, and trying to really bring you in and create this uneasy tension throughout the entirety of the film. I know for a lot of people that could be kind of disappointing, but again, for me, as exactly what I wanted, and in my opinion, a far superior and more effective way to do a horror film than just a bunch of jump scares. Speaking of jump scares, let's get into the ending a little bit here. I'm not going to go into spoilers yet. I will just say, a little bit of the negative this movie is a bit predictable and some things that you might think are happening or going on are exactly happening just like you would predict very similar to immaculate but as i said in my immaculate review i don't feel like they earned those twists they felt like twists just for the sake of twists but in this film when you find out what's going on and it's a little bit predictable, it doesn't, it's not posed as like a big reveal so much as it's posed as like a, a momentous change in the film. So it's a big change for our main character. And yes, it is a twist, kind of, and there's a couple of twists. There's a couple of things in there, but they're not presented as like big, like revolutionary twists in the film. And that's why they work. So even if you might see them coming, they're just part of like this unfolding of a story that you're following along. And then the movie's not over. That's not like, hey, big end twist and then climax scene, that's it. Done. We've still got more to go. So you find out what's going on with the character, but you're not done. You're still, there's still things to be done. There's still tension to be built. And then your character still has to make a decision now. And you still have to follow along with her. So it works so much better 
even if it is a bit predictable than a film like Immaculate, which is predictable and just doesn't work. I can say a lot of great things about this film, honestly, but my last positive before I get into the negatives is I do think that they did a good job just, first of all, being a prequel this many years later and being good is just astonishing, but they did a good job of creating a compelling story that you are do care about for the most part while understanding it's still a prequel. You know, a lot of prequels have that flaw where it's you, you kind of know what's going to happen the whole time. You're like, yeah, this is a prequel and I know that all those characters die or that person becomes the killer because I've seen the other film. So the whole film, you're just kind of like, you know what's going to happen so it doesn't work. I think the first Omen does a really good job at telling a different story that you almost wonder how we get to the Omen for a period of time anyway. And... And it just functions very well. So then when you get to the very end of the film, you want to see more of what's going on in the prequel before you get to the next film. You're not just kind of like, okay, yeah, we got to where we are, um, which I do think it, in that way it fails just a little bit because it doesn't exactly, I guess, set up to the point where you could just watch the next film. But in all fairness, I haven't seen that in a long time, so I could be wrong there but for the most part like i said it does make you want to watch more of these characters watch more of this story that's going on and but at the same time does do a good job at leading into the omen film and working as a prequel which is honestly just very difficult to do especially years later so one final positive actually is the motivation behind this film because i when you get to like the motivation for immaculate again i keep comparing and contrasting because there's very similar films it just doesn't really make sense. You're kind of like, okay, I, I see your motivation, but I also don't. For the first Omen, while the characters are making bad decisions, and of course there's obviously you know, bad things happening, it does actually make sense in the film, their motivation. While it doesn't logically make a whole ton of sense, necessarily there's certain elements that I'll we'll get into in my negatives in just a second, that don't make a whole lot of sense. You kind of have to suspend your disbelief. I think the motivation behind it actually really works for me and just finding out like what the church is trying to do and the problem they're having right now. And also I think this works really well for modern day as well. It, it does a good job of feeling older, but also being applicable to modern time. One final positive, I keep forgetting things that I want to say because there are a lot of good things about this film. Honestly, I could talk a lot about it, but there is a moment in this film that is in that is done in so many movies and it's a car accident i won't say any more than that but there's a car accident in this film and it's a moment that you kind of see coming but works so much better because this film the first moment does something so many films neglect to do and i and as soon as i saw it i was like wow that is missing in so many films where you see like a car accident or you see like i don't know like a character die or something happens right and it just cuts to the next day and you see the the characters like making breakfast or drinking their coffee or whatever and they're like sad about the death that just happened on screen or or whatever we're hearing that unfold like we're getting dialogue just telling us what happened instead of actually showing us what happened and the first omen has that scene this like car accident scene but then it continues the scene and your main character does what someone should do they run over and check on the people and i'm like I, as soon as i saw that it felt so refreshing like yeah the scene's not over just because that thing happened and then you get a really cool additional scene and i i love that this film did that and for some reason it just like was so glaring to me as soon as i saw it that so many films don't do that it like stood out like i was like oh that's something that's missing in a lot of films we just cut to the next day cut to the next scene get exposition telling us what happened and i really have to commend the director and the first omen for not just stopping the scene, not just cutting it, not just cutting back to your character and showing her reaction to it and being like, oh no, that happened, but actually showing her decision. What happens during that scene? She is a human being after all. What's the choice she's going to make? And it adds more to her character development, adds more to her morality, and really helps us to sort of relate to this character. So especially later on in the film when you know, she has choices to make and things are happening. You're able to kind of still side with the character. So getting into my negatives, I do think, of, as I said, this film is a bit predictable in parts. But, of course, 
as I said, I don't think that really matters that much because the film does such a good job of laying this out for you. And it's not really about the twists. It's about the tension and the story that's unfolding and the characters. But like I said, it is a little bit predictable. There are definitely going to be some things that you more than likely will know that are going to happen. Some characters that you will know are going to make certain decisions at a certain point. And it will be obvious when those things happen. You're going to be like, yeah, yeah well, I kind of saw that coming the whole time. Uh, again, I still think it works fine, but it would be a little better if it wasn't as predictable. Also, there are definitely some story elements here, and this is just a product of horror, honestly. I think like similar things happen in the first omen in other films in the 70s and 80s and 90s, but I think we just kind of ignored them, maybe. But when you're watching it now, in 2024, there are some like plot elements that are explaining how they're creating, you know, the how the things are happening and what they're doing to create that. And you kind of just have to be like, okay, <laughs> I guess. All right, you know, they definitely have to suspend your disbelief a little bit. They don't necessarily explain certain things, and it's just part of like horror. The only other negative really of the first omen is that it can be a little bit slow. And I think, as I've said, it does work to its benefit. I feel like the director is, uh, knows exactly what he's doing behind the camera and is really in control of what's happening. But I do feel like maybe he's a little bit just newer still, doesn't have a ton of experience. So there are moments that are a little slower and dragged out that are intentional but could work just a little better with a little bit better pacing maybe, or a little bit improved. There are definitely slow moments. Again, entirely intentional, and I think they work, but overall, I think some people can say, could say it's a little bit slow for them. So that's my review of The First Omen, everybody. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought of The First Omen, if you've seen it, and tell me. Let's compare and com contrast in the comments. Immaculate versus First Omen. The very similar stories. Which one did it better? You know which one I think did it better, but I want to hear down below. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate it. I'm scared on a big bad wolf. I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in caps, dog. Everything bold. And I put that on myself because it's a life that I done chose. I said, come through. You